In this video, I am going to reduce my size until we reach the smallest possible thing in the universe. You would be very surprised to know just how small things can get. So let's start this journey about the size of a child. This is exactly how you looked when you were a child in a diaper. Now I am 0.1 or 10 centimeters in size. That's roughly the size of a mouse under your bed. Huge, right? At 1 cm tall, we are twice as big as a common ant or roughly the size of a sugar cube. But hold on, because we are only getting started and things are only going to get small and small. So keep up with me. At 1 mm, I am about the size of a grain of sand or roughly the size of a tip of needle. One tenth of a millimeter or 100 micrometers is roughly the size of the thickness of a sheet of paper. This is also probably the last thing that you would be able to see with your own eyes. And things are about to get weird. At 10 micrometers, this is roughly the size of a human red blood cell, which is about 6 to 8 micrometers. Many bacteria like the E. coli also come in this range at about 2 micrometers. Whereas the human sperm is quite relatively very large at about 50 to 60 micrometers. At 1 micrometer or 1000 nanometers, we are about the size of a mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Its job is to produce energy for a cell survival. At 100 nanometers, we enter the realm of viruses. Most of the viruses that we see come in this range at about 20 to 200 nanometers. The HIV virus that you can see right here is about 120 nanometers, smaller than the red blood cell. At 10 nanometer, we have arrived at the DNA. Now DNA is a very large molecule that is made up of a large number of individual atoms at about 2 nanometers. The carbon nanotubes with their incredible strength also come in this range. At 1 nanometer or 1000 picometers, you will find the water molecule at 270 picometers or even a single oxygen atom with a width of about 60 picometers. So until now we were shrinking about 10 times every turn. Now we need to shrink even further. Faster. Now we will be shrinking about 1000 times at every turn because now we are about to enter the realm of atoms. This right here is an atom at 1 picometer. Now picometers are used to mark the size of extremely small objects. The strong nuclear force which binds the protons and neutrons together also come in this range at about 1 to 2 picometers only. But don't get confused by this big 3D design. Because atoms are mostly empty space, meaning these protons and neutrons and even the electrons that you are seeing here, in reality they are extremely small. We need to shrink even further 1000 times. At 1 femtometer, a proton has a charge radius of 0.8 femtometers. So does a neutron at 0.8 femtometers. However, an electron has a larger charge radius of about 2.8 femtometers. Now you might be wondering what makes up these protons and neutrons at this stage? Well, to see them we need to get inside one of them. At one atometer, this is a quark. Now quarks are the building blocks of all the protons and neutrons. Quarks is what makes the protons and the neutrons. Theoretical microscopic black hole also come in this very range. But what are quarks made of? Well, we don't really know it yet. However, at one zeptometer, the Large Hadron Collider allows us to probe this very question by using very high energy particle collisions. At one yoctometer, if gravitons, the hypothetical particles which makes up gravity if they do exist, they exist at this very range. At one rontometer, Theoretical studies suggest that the space-time curvature could reach these extremes. Some theories even propose that we may find extra dimensions at this range. At one quactometer, the string theory comes into play. Now, string theory says that everything that we see in the universe at the quantum level is made up of very tiny vibrating strings. Meaning an electron or a quark is nothing but a specific type of vibration of the string. One type of vibration creates the electron and another type of vibration in energy forms the quarks. Finally, we arrive at the smallest possible thing in the universe, at least theoretically. 
the plank length or 10 to the power minus 35 meters. This is the ultimate limit of the universe. Beyond this, the concept of length as we understand simply does not make sense and all the theories that we have just break down after this level. The plank length is basically our understanding of the universe beyond which nothing should exist. So I hope you learned something new today. Do not forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.